I could have spent this entire shoot on location. We saw so many incredible places. I know I'm a Kiwi, but I have to say, I cannot imagine making these films anywhere but this country. Amazing. Wherever we went, it was an extraordinary experience. And here we were, making a film. Go, go, go! A New Zealand film, The Hobbit. It's been thrilling to go back and, and go up and down both the main islands of New Zealand. And we began in Hobbiton. When we first discovered the location, Hobbiton, back in 1998, there were three geographical things that made us choose it as Hobbiton. We needed a distinctive tree set in rolling hillside, ideally with a little lake and a hill behind the tree rising up to give us the position of being in. It looked like Hobbiton. You know, it just looked like a place where people actually lived and people worked. The highlights have definitely been watching Hobbiton from the air, which is something that I don't think was really done on Lord of the Rings. Seeing it like this kind of living model village is just extraordinary. The original Hobbiton set was built out of polystyrene, and even though we had to take it away, which I thought it was a shame, it actually wouldn't have survived. Of course, doing The Hobbit now, it gave us the ability to rebuild Hobbiton out of permanent materials. And it's been made to last out of materials that aren't going to deteriorate, and we can carry on showing people what's involved in making a movie. People who've seen the films can go and relive them by, by actually knocking on uh, Bilbo's door. Or you can just look and see. There's no, there's no having to finish the illusion. It's just here. Camp here for the night. Billy, Killy, after the ponies. Denise bluffs as its volcanic activity has brought the rock up out of the ground. I mean, there's these huge shafts of rock. It looked like something from Jurassic Park. You can't do any helicopter shots coming over from the back because yeah. it's behind it's just, it's just ply it's just and scaffold. But it'll, it'll all come out, I think, in a couple of weeks. And then there's going to be a permanent so one put in in place for the, as a tourist attraction. The beautiful rock formations, cliffs, and then down, down, down into the most incredible bush. And it seemed ancient. There were lots of moss on all the great rocks. It seemed incredibly old. It's a lot of native bush in that area. It's a stunning location. In this area, which is the Twizel area, we managed to get a bunch of shots up on a hill above Lake Bukaki. It was a beautiful vista. Like it was long, wheaten colored kind of grass, and we had to be running through it and being chased by wild. The landscape is really interesting geographically. We're being chased by these terrible monsters. It's just everything you could hope for in an epic adventure. I took a photo that I sent to some friends. Dwarves on vacation. And they refused to believe that this was an actual photograph, that I hadn't photoshopped it. That, that, that place doesn't exist. And I was standing here. Here we are at base camp, ready for the big push to uh, uh, Rangi, Mount Cook. Behind us here is Mount Cook, which is New Zealand's highest mountain. It's where Sir Edmund Hillary um, trained to climb Mount Everest. It's a little less than half the height of Everest, so he basically had to climb Mount Cook twice, and he sort of had practice for Everest, basically. Very, very beautiful, huge open spaces. Lovely wildflowers, I remember, go along uh, all the roads, like just all the kind of the colours. And we hit it at this time of year where, where these incredible variety of shades of purple lupins just, you know, springing up everywhere. Nearly everyone on the crew has said it was like doing a recce for an amazing road trip they're going to do in the future. They always say, don't leave home until you've seen the country. Now I've seen the country and I'm pretty blown away by it. So, Strath Tyree. Central Otago, a pretty remote location. We wanted to use this location primarily because it's a chase, a chase through the rocks, wags, after the dwarves. So I, I love the idea of doing a chase that was uh, that spread out over a huge landscape. This is glorious about this place, is you can do 360 degrees, and there's not a satellite dish in, in sight.
you know, when we all went to Queenstown, I'd never been there before, and it was just astonishing. I mean, a beautiful jewel, uh, really at the kind of the, the bottom of the world. Queenstown, a famous holiday place here, but we, we escape the crowds and go up the lake and into the mountains, and uh, that's perhaps my favorite spot. Earnslaw Burn is probably one of my favorite locations, a gorgeous alpine sort of valley surrounded by waterfalls. The place was alive with these incredible cascades. We're very lucky to go to some extraordinary locations. A lot of the world's impression of New Zealand is that landscape. You know, the rolling hills and the mountains and the fjords. It's got everything in it. It's real. It's the real countryside. But at first you think, wow, what a good job they made. But it's, but it's not. It's the real thing. This is the Middle Earth I'd, I would always have pictured. Meanwhile, the backdrop is so beautiful, people will think it's CGI. It looks too perfect. You can use that as an advert for New Zealand if you want. I mean, succinct, snappy, all positive, and cut. Brilliant. Trademarked. <laughs>